بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم محمد لا ما صلى على محمد صلى الله عليك يا مولانا هذا يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله على غايك يا ابن رسول الله صلى الله على غايك يا ابن أمير المؤمنين صلى الله على غايك يا ابن فاطمة المظلومة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله العزة ولرسوله وللمؤمنين ولكن المنافقين لا يعلمون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم for the purification of our hearts and for the hastening of the reappearance of our beloved 12th Imam with the loudest of our voices, Sallu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. Once again, we thank Almighty Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, for gracing us with this wonderful moment and wonderful opportunity on this third night of the holy month of Muharram. We pray to Allah, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, to continue to inspire us with the true teachings of Aba Abdullah al Wasayn alayhi salam. The verse I've just quoted is part of a verse from Quran 63, verse number 8. Allah wa in this verse explicitly explains وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ وَنَعَيَا لَا يَفْكَهُونَ that indeed, honor and dignity belongs to Allah, first and foremost. On a second level, it belongs to the Messenger of Allah. And on the third level, honor, dignity belongs to the believers. Although the hypocrites do not know. Now, departing from this beautiful verse of chapter 63, our topic of tonight is Hussein alayhi salam, the beacon of honor. Or dignity. And the examination of tonight is of the following three stages. The first stage is to look at the types of minds or types of akal. Second stage of the examination is to focus on self awareness or self knowledge, ma'rifatun nafs. And then the last stage of the examination is to look at two major potentials or powers that is hidden in each and every one of us. And we have to try as much as we can to activate those powers and to ensure that those powers manifest in our lives. The power of connecting with Allah and the power of honor or the power of dignity. First stage of the examination 
is the types of minds or aksamul aql. You know, psychologically, there are two types of minds, as you know very well. You've got what is called the aklun bahiri, and you've got the aklun batini. You've got apparent or conscious minds, and zahiri, hidden or subconscious minds. And there are distinctions between the two. And understanding these types of mind is important for you to be able to discover who you are. Because failing to discover who you are, you will not be able to reach the climax of your existence. And you will not be able to enjoy the labor of this existence. So it is crucial we understand this mind which is given to us by Allah. You know, our beloved Sif Imam mentioned that there is nothing which is so dear to Allah than the aql or the mind of insan. Allah loves the aql because it is the first prophet. It is this mind that inspired you to believe in Prophet Muhammad. It is this mind that inspires you to believe in Ahlul Bayt, isn't it? It is this mind that inspires you to go to work. So aql or mind is crucial. Psychologically, you've got conscious mind, you've got subconscious mind. What is conscious mind? Conscious mind carries some very important roles in our lives. Number one is tahlilul afkar. It analyzes information. It doesn't just analyze, it crystallizes the information. And then at the end, it concludes. It's in touch. It deduces something from that information. Now question, how does conscious mind conclude and deduce information? It does it in three simple, in two simple steps. First step, they call it al-istiqbal. Second step, al-tarmiz. What is istiqbal? Receiving the information. You know very well. This mind of insan is very powerful. And why is it powerful? Because in a second, as you know, in Thania, in a second, this mind received 400 million bytes or bits and megabytes. But out of these 400 million bits or megabytes that our minds receive in each and every second, we become consciously aware of only 2,000 information out of this. Now, how does insan become consciously aware of the 2,000 information? It leads us to the second stage. What is it? A term is coding. You know, our minds cannot analyze without coding and numbering. Can you pay attention, my dear brothers and sisters? Allah is great. Tabarakallah wa aksan wal aliqeen, isn't it? Glory be to Allah, who is the best of all creatures. Yani this mind, before it analyzes every information, it codes it. It gives the rams, as they say, symbols and numbers. For example, you are faced with mathematical issue. For you to be able to analyze it, there must be numbers there. Without numbers, you can't analyze. Likewise, when you are first with philosoph philosophical and social matters, there must be coding, there must be symbols. Otherwise, you will not be able to analyze it. Now you go to Quran. Surah to Zumar, verse 17. Allah says, فَبَشِّرْ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَا أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَاهُمُ اللَّهُ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ أُولُ الْأَلْبَابِ Allah says to your holy prophet, give glad tidings to my servant, but not every single servant. Those يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْكَوْلَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَا When they listen, like they come to modulus, they hear so many informations. What do they do? They analyze the information and they take the best out of the information. That is conscious mind. Chapter Zomar, verse 17. 
Allah says, who are those? Ula'ika alladheena adahum Allah. They are those who are guided by Allah. And they are ulul albab. Ulul albab simply means what? People of the intellect. They are witty. They are smart. So the first level, Allah discusses conscious mind in Quran. And we all have these conscious minds. One way or the other, we analyze things in our lives, isn't it? Now the second type, subconscious mind, aqlun batini. Or as mystics mention, hidden intellect. What is hidden intellect or subconscious mind? There are so many definitions given by scholars, psychologists, and the rest. But all those definitions are leading to one definition. And that subconscious mind is a container where the factors of our personalities are stored in. We all have personalities. And our personalities are made up of three major factors. The first factor of our personality is what? It's a mu'yul, male, inclination, desire. It's a factor of your personality. Yes, your inclination might be different from my inclination. But inclination or desire is a factor of our personality. It determines who your personality is or what's your personality. The second factor of our personality is what? Gara is instinct. We all have instinct. And you know, if you look at my inclination, it's all desire. I'm hungry. I love this food. I go for it. I need a rest. I want to go to this place. Your inclination, your desire. But when it comes to instinct, no. What in- instinct does is what? Somebody angers you. Somebody upsets you. Somebody steps on your toe. What do you do? You react. Where does this reaction emanate from? Your garida, your instinct. And then the third factor of our personality is what? It's talker, potential, power, force. In you, there is a great potential to become something else. Maybe not what you are today. In you, there is a great force. There is a great power given to you by Allah. So when we talk of subconscious mind, is nothing but sirru shaksiyat al-insan. It is the secret of a man's personality. A subconscious mind. How do you relate to it? Because it's easy to relate to conscious mind. It analyzes, it reflects, it ponder. Simple as that. But subconscious mind sometimes might be tricky for one to be able to relate to it. Because it may be functioning without you noticing it. Sometimes subconscious mind will activate your instinct. It will activate your inclination. It will activate the power in you without you noticing it. Typical example. When we go to bed at night, conscious mind stops functioning. Allah is great. What function? Subconscious mind. All our dreams are from subconscious mind. Sometimes you dream you are next to the Zari of Abba Abdullah. When you wake up, you are in South London. Sometimes you dream driving Lamborghini, isn't it? I realize that you're driving Ford Astra. So subconscious mind works during the night when the conscious mind ceases to function. And the importance of subconscious mind is that when you know and acknowledge it, then you know who you are. If you do not acknowledge it and recognize it, one will not be able to know who he is truly is. And that is a very, very important aspect of the teachings of Islam. Look at Quran, chapter 2, verse 7. فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى Kindly, I beg you, pay attention, brothers and sisters. He said, Allah 
He knows the secret and the hidden. Secret here, according to some scholars, refer to subconscious mind. Aklon Batini. That he knows what is stored inside you. He knows your inclinations. He knows your instincts. And Allah knows your potentials. You may undermine yourselves, but Allah knows your potentials. فَإِنَّهُ يَعْلَمُ السِّرَّ وَأَخْفَى And on the same length, Amir al-Mu'minin comes forward and said, الْمَرْءُ مَخْبُوءٌ تَحْتَ طَيَّ لِسَانِ Amir al said, he said, Insan is hidden under his tongue. When scholars analyze this tradition, so he's talking of subconscious mind, which is the secret of your personality. And paying attention to it will ensure that you flourish in your lives. And that is why it is not acceptable. Under any circumstance whatsoever, we'll discuss more on it, to undermine yourself, to belittle yourself, to lose your self-esteem, to inflict injuries on yourself. It is not acceptable. And in the tradition of Mawlai Kainat, indicate to what is inside you. You remember that famous tradition? Do you think you are just a small atom and the greatest world is in you? So many things in you. In one tradition, I remember when he said, Allahu Akbar. He said, Allah sent people's messengers and then he also sent to them his messengers or prophets so that this prophet and these messengers will help them to activate their fitra and what is inside them but at the end of their word that's what interests me Amir al said وَيُثِيرُوا دَفَائِنَ الْأَكْلِ and to show them where to what is inside their intellect. Dafa in Bimana Kunuz. Meaning in you, there are so many treasures. There are so many things inside us. This may not be working. It doesn't mean that the world is over for you. Dafa in That inside you, there are layers of minds. And there are layers of intellect. And there are so many potentials. So therefore, on the first level, let's understand what is conscious and subconscious mind. This subconscious mind stores and contains the inclination, the instinct, and the powers that we have within us and potential. Now let's look at the second stage. Ma'rifatun nafs. Although psychologists Different psychologists, be it Freud or Alfred, Alda, Jung, and the rest, they've got their own views on what is the strongest and the highest instinct in our lives. For instance, Alda will say the highest instinct is the instinct of possessiveness. One will come forward and tell you the highest instinct is the instinct of readiness, and so forth and so forth. But Islam is teaching us, yes, instinct is important. But what is more important than instinct is to discover your potential. Have you discovered your potential? Or no, you are okay with what you are doing? No. We've got great potentials given to us by Allah wa ta'ala. If we do not discover it, it is important we discover our potential and take whatever we do to the next level. As I said, if you have failed in this, you cannot fail in that. Second stage, ma'rifatun nafs. Self-awareness and self-knowledge. We know that famous tradition. Man arafa nafsahu fakad arafa rabba. Wa man jagila nafsahu fakad jagila rabba. Whoever knows himself, knows his Lord. And whoever is ignorant about himself, he or she is ignorant about his Lord. Now let's dissect this. What sort of self-awareness leads to Allah? We often hear this tradition being quoted by scholars left and right. 
not every self awareness lead to knowing Allah wa ta'ala. I want to share three definitions of self awareness with you philosophical definition, psychological from the behavioral school or thought, and then Islamic spiritual definition. Philosophically, it's very simple. They said, Nafs is mujarrat al mawda something immaterial. A material is something that can be divided into pieces. It has left, it has right, it has width, it has weight. That's material. Immaterial spiritual, it cannot be divided. It is as is. So your nafs is ruh, mujarrat and al It's just there. It doesn't grow, it doesn't dwindle. Since the first day you arrived in this world, your nafs is the same up until the day you depart from this world. That's philosophical. This type of awareness will not lead to Allah. Yes, it helps. Behavioral definition from the psychological perspective. There's a self-awareness is what? It's when you become aware of the sicknesses of yourself. For example, there are people who are examined with the sickness of Azula, isolation. They don't want to be with people. Become aware of it. And there are people no shara they call. No matter how the person eats, he doesn't become satisfied. Some people like that can eat and eat. Only when they start sleeping, they stop eating. <laughs> so from a psychological perspective, when you talk of ilm nafs or ma'rifatul nafs, is to know my own sickness. But what interests me is Islamic spiritual definition of ma'rifatul nafs. Self-awareness, self-knowledge, understanding yourself, and understanding who you are. Because narration is very clear. Man arafa you know yourself. Automatically you know your Lord. What does it mean spiritually and Islamically to know yourself? It simply means Sayyidatul insan ala aklihil batini. It's when insan has control over his or her subconscious mind. If you have a subconscious mind, when you can manage your inclinations, desires, when you can manage your instincts, and when you are able to identify your potentials, then you've known yourself, and that will lead to Allah. And that is what Surah Shams, Verse 8 going forward mentioned. And Allah mentioned in Quran about nafs. And if you look at Surah to Shams, it really tells us self-awareness is crucial. Those of you, even if you don't know Arabic, kindly pay attention with me. Allah starts was shamsi wa duha. This shams there is a alif lam was shamsi. Allah is not saying was shams. Was shams. The next one was kamari and the moon alif lam. Up to nafs. When it reached nafs, no one nafs. He said one nafs. You know why? Alif lam they call ma'rifa. Without alif lam they call nakira. What does it mean? Whenever. In Arabic, you see a word without alif lam beginning. It means generalization. It means greatness. Meaning nafs is very great in the sight of Allah. And Allah cherishes nafs. And Allah respects nafs. Me, 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 your nafs. We, 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 your nafs. I don't want to sit next to him, your nafs. Islam, when it says worship Allah, not, not addressing the body, it's addressing your nafs. Donate. Who is Hussein? It's addressing your nafs. It's not addressing the body. Allah says, wa nafsin, wa ma And not only that. Allah mentioned sun, he mentioned moon, he mentioned day, he mentioned night. At the end he said what? Wa nafs. Mean what? I created everything because of nafs. Allah says, oh, the son of Adam, I created everything for your sake. And I created you for my sake. 
Nafsi is very important. So spiritually, when we talk of ma'rifatul nafs, we're talking of having power over your subconscious mind, over your desire, over your inclinations, over your instincts. And you are able to identify your potentials in life. Have you reached the limit of your potentials, which is given to you by Allah or not? Or you keep blaming yourself, attacking yourself. I'm a failure. I let my family down. I let my community down. No, sky is the limit as per the creation of Allah. Let them laugh at you. Let them undermine you. Let them gossip about you. Let them accuse you. Wallahi, sky is the limit. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. بعلى أصواتكم صلوا على محمد وآل محمد. And that is why, if someone comes and asks you, why do you believe imams are infallible? Just, just by the way, because we discussing معرفة النفس. The first level you said Quran that they have less territory, but on the second level. They are masumin because they had power over their subconscious mind. They were able to control subconscious mind. Because if you can control your desire, and you can control your inclination, and you are able to identify your potential, then sky is the limit. So Ahlul Bayt were masumin simply because there was saitara to ukul him they were able to control and manage the subconscious mind and as a result of that they became masumin and hence they would do whatever they would do and so therefore my dear brothers and sisters when we talk of self-awareness kindly understand this and I would like you to reflect on this when you go back home it simply means I have a power over my subconscious mind. That's where the waswas comes in, isn't it? That's where the shaitan tempers with what we are trying to do. Last stage of the examination. The power of connecting and the power of honor. What connection am I talking about? You will hear just now. We've just discussed. Two types of mind, conscious and subconscious. And we discussed that you need to have power over your subconscious mind in order to identify your potentials, in order to identify your powers. What are the powers available in our subconscious mind that when we tap on them, it leads us to perfection? Two major ones. The first one is the power to connect with Allah. It's in our subconscious mind. The second one is the power to be honorable person in your own right. These are powers and potentials given to us by Allah. Let's begin with the first one. The power to connect with Allah. See, in this world, all of us, whether we pay attention or not, there is one thing we experience. Fakrul wujudi. Existential poverty. All of us. We live in existential poverty. And not everyone who experiences existential poverty experiences spiritual poverty. Kindly pay attention. Today the mic is not allowing me to speak well. I don't know why. Sallallahu alayhi Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. All of us in this world, we experience existential poverty. But as I said, not everyone who experiences existential poverty 
experiences spiritual poverty. Fakr ruhi. Now let's look at existential poverty to make it easy for our understanding. Alhamdulillah, you are a learned person, but your knowledge is limited. That's existential poverty. You are rich, wealthy. You come with the best of cars in the mosque. Your richness is limited. That is existential poverty. Fakrul wujudi. You are famous. It's limited. That is fakrul wujudi. You are powerful because you are the president. You are the powerful because you are secretary. You are powerful because you are flood and flood. Your power is limited. That is fakrul wujudi. Existential poverty. Chapter in Fitar 6. Allah mention. Ya ayyuhal insan. Ma garraka bi rabbika al karim. Alladhi khalakaka fasawaka fa'adala. Fi ayyu suratin ma sha'a rakkabak. Said, O oh, insan, what the event you from your Lord who created you and molded you and made you in pieces. So we all in this world, whether we pay attention to it or not, live existential poverty. Now what is interesting and what is needed is that one should be able to convert his or her existential poverty to spiritual poverty. Anyone who is able to convert existential poverty to spiritual poverty, that person has discovered his or her potential. What is this spiritual poverty? The need to have Allah in my life. Easier said than that. We are limited by time, limited by space. This limitation should lead you to think that you are Ainul Fakri Billah. You are a real poverty to Allah. I'm not saying poor, real poverty to Allah. Chapter 4 makes it crystal clear, verse 15. Ya ayyuhal nasu. Antumul fukara ila Allah. Wallahu huwa al-ganiyul hamid. Oh people, you are needy to Allah. Because you are limited. You've got a big house. You left the house, you are here. Currently, you are limited by this Imam Barga. And not the entire Imam Barga where you are seated. This insan is miskin, Wallah. So let this existential poverty lead all of us to spiritual poverty. Anyone who has a feeling of spiritual poverty will not spend a night but at least few minutes to chant the praises of Allah. Spiritual poverty is what we need to have as a feeling. Otherwise, it's not going to be easy. We've made it in dunya. We've got engineers, we've got doctors, we've got pharmacists. Where are the awliya Allah, the true servant of Allah? We need fakrul ruhi. And that will come when a person is able to reflect. You go to psychologists. Sometimes they're able to tell you, I think your potential is here, why don't you try this? A man came to our beloved chief imam. He said, Dulani ilallah, show me God. I don't know God. Well, Jafar looked at him and asked him a question. Have you ever been stuck in a boat, in a ship, and you tried everything and you couldn't manage? He said, Yes. Imam asked me, In that situation, what was in your mind? He said, I still had in my mind something would come and save me. He said, That something is Allah. So sometimes the experience of spiritual poverty comes when you are in trouble. But when the trouble is over, insan forgets. Inna li insana la yatoga arra'ahu stamna. 
In sun, exceed the limit when things are going well. <laughs> but when things are not going well, in sun doesn't bother. Chapter 30, verse 30. فَأَكِمْ وَجَعَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا فِتْرَةَ اللَّهِ اللَّتِي فَتَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا فَأَكِمْ وَجَعَكَ لِلدِّينِ Establish yourself in this deen, in this religion. Because there is a fitra which Allah created you on. And there are so many definitions of fitra. This promote your nature. What is fitra? Meaning tawheed, la ilaha illallah. But here, when we talk of fitra, we are talking of what? This power of connecting with Allah. It is in you. You are ashraf al-makhlukat. Wallah. You are ashraf al-makhlukat. You can't settle, but to become a true servant of Allah. And the last one is what? Taqatul Izza. In this subconscious mind, there is a power of a honor. Question, are you honorable or miserable? Ask yourself. Imam Hussein, honorable. Are you honorable? Can you put your hand on your chest to tell me you are honorable? Or you miserable. A lot of people, they serve their desires and inclinations and instincts, but failing to identify their potentials. Anyone who is able to manage the desire and the instinct and identify his potential, he or she is a aziz, is honorable in the sight of Allah. I know you have identified your potential to be a professional. But have you identified your potential to be a true ambassador of Allah on earth? Let's invest time in Allah. That's the Izzah. And hence Imam al-Baqir mentioned. Ma akbahu lil mu'min an takuna lahu ragbatun to dhilluhu. Said it is worse for a believer to have a desire and through the desire the believer is undermined. We follow our desires. When we are exposed to wealth we don't ask whether it's lawful or unlawful. We just go for it. People may say, MashaAllah, he is rich, he is donating. But in the sight of Allah, you are miserable. When we are exposed to relationships, we do not ask whether it's lawful or unlawful. You just go for it. If you go for the unlawful one, you may be as easy in the sight of people, but valil in the sight of Allah. Gossip. In some communities, it's a slogan. Allah. When you are exposed to it, and you stay away from it, you are Aziz. But when you get into it, you are Zalil. You know, you can't please people. Try to please Allah. We've learned that even during Corona. So you've got that plaka, al izzafik You've got that power, that potential to become honorable, not just in the sight of people, but in the sight of Allah. The honor and dignity belongs to Allah, the messenger and the believer. Therefore, I say, my dear brothers and sisters, discover your spiritual potential. And you will be independent in this world and on the day of Qiyamah. Otherwise, you are physically independent but spiritually slave. You are physically honorable but spiritually miserable. Companions of Abba Abdullah, this is where I'm landing now. They were exposed. To the goodies of this world. <laughs> but Umayya went to bribe them. Take this money and leave Hussein. 
What happened? They discovered their potentials. And they reached their subconscious minds. And hence they stood by Abba Abdullah. They are Isa, honorable. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, we've got it here. Because of him. He was given ultimatum. You succumb, you pay allegiance, you are fine. Live your life, enjoy. Be in Medina, there is no problem. But why didn't he succumb? Because he needed the Izzatullah, not the Izzatullah. Abba Abdullah wanted people's, uh, Allah's dignity and not that of people. And hence he said, I'm not going to stretch my hand to you as a miserable person. So my aim of tonight's discussion, my dear brothers and sisters, is to say to all of us, including myself, Tabarakallahu ahsanul khaliki. Glory be to Allah, who is the best of all creatures. And out of all that he created, insan is the best of all. Have you reached your potential? Or not? What are you waiting for? Time is going. We need God. We need to connect at night. The Holy Prophet said to Amir al-Mu'mineen, safeguard three things. Imam Ali looked at the Holy Prophet, said, what are those three? Prophet said, number one, Salatul Layl. Number two, Salatul Layl. Number three, Salatul Layl. That's where your Izza is. I believe in me or not, my dear brothers and sisters. Yes, we need to explore our potentials of this world, no doubt. But you become Aziz in the law is power. Mystics achieved whatever they achieved because of waking up at night. If you can't do at all, Shafi and Witta, two and one, do it. If when you go to sleep, you can't wake up, do it before you go to sleep. We need God. And you've got the potential to do that. Time should not be allowed to go wasted. Chill. But chill reasonably. Don't waste your time. I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. My dear youth, you've got the greatest potential to be neighbors to your creator. What does it mean to be neighbor to your creator? To feel the presence of your creator. You've got that power now. Not when you start sitting on a chair. Now that you've got the energy, use it. Time will come and you'll not be able to do it. Believe me or not. And there is taste in going to Allah. And scholars mention, ignore taste for a taste. There is taste in wasting time. But there is another taste in worshipping God. Let's emulate about Abdullah and his companions. They left this world as a'izza, as people of honor, as people of integrity. We want to be honorable in front of people, yes. But what matters? Be honorable in the sight of Allah. And people will run to you. We take our hearts to the holy city of Kufa. Look at these great servants of Allah, this great ambassador of Abba Abdullah, who died as a Aziz in the law. Honorable in the sight of Allah, in the person of Muslim bin Aqil alayhi salam. Those companions of Ahl al-Bayt, they discovered their potentials and they lived their lives properly. The scholars will always begin 
He'll begin with one of the companions of Amir al muminin before going to Muslim bin Atil. Maytham al tamara alayhi salam. They held Maytham and they took him next to the house of Amr ibn Uraith. You know what they did to Maytham? They dug the nail on his chest. And when they dug the nail on the chest of Maytham al tamar they looked at Maytham and said to Maytham, Talk about Ali again and see what he will do to you. That was the moment when Maytham began to narrate the fadail of Amir al Mu'minin. Maytham said, My master Ali achieved the victory in the battle of Uhud. And my master achieved the victory in the battle of Badr. And my master was the one. Who finished off Amr ibn Abdul Wad on the third day? Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad came and found Maytham still praising Amir al Mu'minin. He said to him, It hurts me to hear you speaking, Amir al Mu'minin. You know what they did? They put knife on the tongue of Maytham and they pushed him back and he fell on a tree. And you know how they finished off my thumb. My son died two weeks before Karbala, as you know. This now brings us to Muslim bin Aqil alayhi salam. It was no doubt very difficult for Muslim in Kufa. Why was it difficult for Muslim narration mentioned? It was during that time when Mukhtar was arrested by the enemies. And Hani ibn Urwa was killed. And thousands of the lovers and followers of Al Al Bayt were persecuted in Kufa. At one stage, 4,000, 18,000 people around Muslim bin Akila. But all of a sudden, the 18 trimmed and reduced to 4,000. All of a sudden, 4,000 reduced to 30 people. When Muslim was praying, three people behind the Muslim. By the time he finished Salah and heading outside, there was no one with Muslim bin Aqila alayhi salam. Muslim found himself on the street of Kufa. Yaltafitu yameenan wa shimala. Muslim was standing left and right. Muslim was exhausted. All of a sudden he found a house and he sat in front of that house. But a girl came out of the house and she saw Muslim sitting and taking rest. She rushed and informed their mother. When the mother came out, she saw Muslim. She said to him, oh man, who you are and what do you want? He looked at her and he said, oh lady, I need water. I am thirsty. Can you give me water to drink? Allahu Akbar. The lady offered Muslim a place to stay. But narration mentioned when her son came back, he saw the mother going between rooms. When he inquired, he was told it was Muslim bin Akil. He rushed to the enemies and reported and announced to them, Muslim is in our house. Muhammad ibn Ash'as was sent with 300 soldiers. They came and started fighting Muslim bin Akil. Narration mentioned initially they were fighting him on a one to one. But all of a sudden, when they realized the way he was warding them off, they came and surrounded him. They were pelting him from top, from above. They were pelting his stones and rock. Narration mentioned Muslim fell down and he rise up. He stood up. He fell. Down. He stood up, he fell down. As you mentioned, blood was flowing on the face of Muslim bin Akila. They pelted him and hit him when he was on the ground. We are told in the narration, they dragged the Muslim on the street of Kufa up to the palace of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. And the way they tortured Muslim, even Ubaidullah could not recognize the face of Muslim bin Akila. But when they entered, Ubaidullah looked at Muslim. He said, you want to kill me? He said, take him up there and tie him up on the roof. They took Muslim, they tied him up, they laid his body on the roof. 
before they could kill a Muslim said to them I have three requests from you number one I borrowed money from people when I die please pay them their money number two kindly give me Islamic ghusl and barrier number three kindly inform Abba Abdullah that I'm killed Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad responded, we will pay your debt, but we will not give you any ghusl and barrier. And number three, we will not inform Abba Abdullah, Hussein would come here and meet his death. How do you know how they finish up Muslim? They tied him, they laid his body on the roof, and they pushed the body. <laughs> I told when they were about to push the body, he called out, Assalamu alaikum ya Abba Abdullah. But as they were pushing the body, as the body of Muslim falling down, they were chopping off the head of Muslim. Abba Abdullah was on his way to Kufa. All of a sudden he stopped. And he said, Wa alayka salamu ya Muslim abna akila. Abu Abdullah approached the daughter of Muslim Hamida. He began to put on her shoulder and he said to Hamida, Oh Hamida, my sons are like your brothers and my daughters are like your sisters. Hamida looked at Abu Abdullah. She said, Oh uncle, is my father dead or alive? <laughs> Bibi Sukaina came next to Hamida. She held Hamida. She said, Hamida, I will protect you. I will take care of you. Yes, what the Armabul Makatil mentioned. But who was there for Sukaina? Who was there for Sukaina when they began to slap on her cheek? But you know, when they arrived in Karbala, taking much of your time, let me stop here. A lady approached Sukaina and Hamida. And she said to them, I have a message for you, Hamida, from your father. Hamida asked her, what is the message? Said, your father, when he was about to die, he said to me, when I meet you, I should say salam to you. But then Hamida said, oh lady, can I ask you a question? She said, yes. <laughs> when they were killing my father, who was there to protect my father? <laughs> على لعنة الله على الكوم الظالمين وسيعلم الذين ظلموا آل محمد أي منكلب ينكلبون إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون معتم الحسين يا حسين